Hey friends, in some of the shooting video games, you have seen that when we shoot at some objects like concrete, metal, wood, you see that uh, the bullet holes appears on the object and there are different bullet holes when you shoot at the objects, like if there are different objects, the bullet holes appear to be different. So in this tutorial, we will be doing the same. So at the beginning, we will create our bullet hole scene. So to create a bullet hole scene, add a special node and rename it to bullet hole. Next, add a animated sprite 3D node and rename it whatever you want. In my case, I will be naming it to concrete because I will add my concrete texture to this node. So next, in the frame section, select the empty, click on new sprite frames. Again, if you click sprite frames, this will open up uh, the sprite frame section. And initially, there is a frame called as default, so I will be renaming it to 1. And next, I have some of the bullet hole textures which I have downloaded from the internet. So just drag and drop the images. Here, I will be using two images. So what I will do is, I will add another frame, I will name it to 2. And I will drag the second texture to the second slot. Next, once you drag in the texture, you will see that our texture is present in our viewport. And if you have multiple textures, then what you can do is you can add multiple slots and rename it uh, like 2, 3, 4, etc. And then make sure that you just drag and drop a single texture to each frame. Next, in the animation section here, you can see if you change to 1, uh, it go, uh, the texture viewport uh, or our viewport switches to the first texture and if you select 2, this will show up our second texture. So using the animation property in code, we will be later on pick a random texture from our texture slots. Remember that if you have multiple textures, then we will pick a random texture from that textures. So next in the flag section, here click on shaded and now just duplicate the concrete node and uh, I will name it as glass because in this section I will be adding my glass textures. So what I will do is again I will just refresh both the animation and the frame section. Next again click on new sprite frames, name it as 2 and 1 or 1 or 2 anything and drag and drop the textures yes you can see how glass holes are visible and again make sure in the flag section you enable shaded option next what you do is you uh, attach a script to our main node so select your main node click on this icon and change the template to no comment click on create so at the beginning we will create a reference for both these nodes so just write on ready war concrete and the path for our concrete node next on ready war glass and the path for our glass node remember that if you have multiple nodes like if you have added multiple textures for wood metal plastic etc then make sure you give the reference here and after this create a variable called types and this will be an array so what this variable will store is it will store this both slots name like 1 and 2 and if you have given any different name then make sure you just write the names here so in my case uh, the names are 1 and 2 and I just wrote 1 and 2 and make sure you write the names in quotation mark and after this create a function called show hole with the parameter as type so what this function will do is it will properly display our textures so like if our bullet collides with any concrete object then it will display our concrete uh, texture and if our bullet collides with glass object then it will display our glass texture and so on like for metal wood plastic etc so in this function write match type which means it will detect or it will show up our proper texture to be visible so what we will do is at the beginning we will just say match type and if our type matches to concrete then we just set pass and again if our match type matches to glass then again pass in this section and in this section we will be writing code a little bit but at present we will just say pass and after this write underscore and again dot and again just say pass so what this means is if none of them matches then it will work on this and again just try pass 
it means if you pass any wrong value here then there will be no error and after this what we do is if our uh, match or our type matches to concrete then we want uh, what we want is we want our concrete node to be visible and after visible what we do is we want to pick a random texture and after picking a random texture even uh, you can see in the inspector here there is an option called flip hedge which just flips or it just makes a mirror image of our texture so what we do is we will randomly flip our textures like some of the textures will be visible normally and some textures will be flipped so we will get more number of variants and after this we will use the rotation degrees value like we will rotate our texture in z axis uh, something like 90 or 180 or 270 or like 140 uh, it can be any random number so what this both will do is it will just generate more random textures so again let me repeat it will pick a random one and after that again it will just flip hedge randomly after click of uh, flipping hedge randomly what it will do is it will rotate uh, the texture again randomly from 0 to 360 and after doing this if our uh, hole matches to concrete then sorry if our uh, type matches to glass then what we'll do is again we'll pick a random texture after picking that again we'll flip hedge if necessary and again in the transform section we will rotate our glass texture and if you have multiple then you need to keep on write the same code for all the nodes so rather, uh, rather than writing the same code what we will do is we will create a function and we will just call the function on each line so that we will avoid the same code writing more than once so create a function called as rotate texture text is short for texture and the parameter with text and in this function at the beginning we will just say texture dot visible equals to true which will make our uh, nodes to be visible so at initially or at the beginning uh, all our nodes will be invisible so it will properly detect the nodes which should be visible and it will just make the nodes visible like if you want our concrete node to be visible then it will just make uh, the concrete node to be visible and if you want our glass node to be visible then it will just make our glass node to be visible so this will avoid the clipping like this so make sure you just uh, hide both of them and then we will pick a random animation or you can say it as random frame between 1 and 2 so to pick a random frame write text dot animation equals to types and here just write randy with a percentage symbol and then types dot size so what this will do is it will just pick a random texture and after this to have a random rotation on z axis write text dot rotation degrees dot z to rotate in z direction and then that equals to random range from 0 to 360 so this will get a random number from 0 to 360 and rotate our texture and after this we will randomly flip our texture on horizontal using this flip hedge property so to get a random yes or no for our flip hedge property just write if randy and again percentage symbol to if this is true then just flip our texture horizontally you can even pass it as vertically uh, but it's your choice just make sure you flip your texture in a single axis either it can be horizontal or vertical and what this will do is it will just randomly make this line as true or false so sometimes this line will be true and this will work and sometimes this line will be false and this will not work so it will randomly flip our texture in horizontal axis and after this what we'll do is we will call our function here so just write rotate texture and here the parameter is concrete and the concrete here name comes from here and this is the path for our concrete node and then if our type matches to glass then what we'll do is we will call uh, the rotate texture function with the parameter as glass so remember that if you have again multiple uh, textures then you can just call the function with a proper parameter 
now again here to get uh, the randomized value again here and here what we will do is in the ready function we will call the randomize function uh, randomize function so by calling this function it will make this and this more random so that we don't get uh, the same sequence of series so till now our bullet hole texture visible mechanic has been finished so after this uh, what we'll do is like after firing the bullet after showing our bullet hole texture after three seconds what we'll do is we will just uh, slightly fade our texture so to fade the texture here in the modulate value by decreasing the alpha you can see it can uh, the a value controls the transparency of your bullet hole texture so by using the alpha value what you do is you will gradually just fade out our texture remember that you can even use the opacity value but i will be using the alpha value so to gradually fade out our texture in the script right can erase equals to false and this i am making a variable and then i will create another variable called bullet hole and i will not set anything for this so after this line right yield get recreate timer here the wait time is uh, i am setting it to 3 seconds which means after 3 seconds our uh, texture can fade out and again uh, the second parameter is timeout which means after 3 seconds run the next line and in the next line we will set our can erase to true and then we will set our bullet hole to texture so now to gradually fade out what we will do is we will create a function called process and this is a in bullet code dot function so in this function right if our can erase is true then we will change our modulate alpha value by just saying bullet hole dot modulate dot alpha and we need our alpha value to gradually decrease so that our texture generally fade out so write equals love function so here i am using love function because it controls or it changes the first parameter to second parameter and initially the first parameter will be our present alpha value and the second parameter will be zero because we want our alpha value to be zero and Finally, the third parameter is the time, which is two times delta. Make sure that if you want uh, your texture to fade out faster, then you can increase this number. But I'll just set it to two. And once our bullet hole fade out, what we'll do is we will delete our bullet hole scene. So, right, if our bullet hole dot modulate dot alpha value is equal to zero which means our bullet hole scene has completely disappeared and if our bullet hole completely disappears then you just say Q free which means uh, the scene will be deleted and now it's time to save our scene so press ctrl s and name it whatever you want and remember that you just uh, remember this name of your scene and click on save so after this what we will do is I will just create a dummy scene to check out our uh, bullet hole scene so here are my two scenes remember that you can create whatever scene you like but to test uh, this bullet hole scene what I have did is I have created a static body node with a mesh instance attached to it and a collision shape for it and in the mesh instance I have given a color for my mesh and the color is blue for the glass because i think uh, the glass is quite blue and for concrete what i have did is i have did the same and i have just set the color as the gray so i guess uh, the concrete should be the color of gray so after this what i have did is i have just selected the main node and in the node in the group section i have just added the glass main node in a group called glass so if you don't know how to add then just what you can do is just here type the name as glass and click on add and here again i have did the same thing for my concrete in the nodes in the group section i have added the node in a group called concrete 
so this will help me to know which objects are of concrete and which objects are of type glass and if you see here final thing what you can do is if your textures are large then you can scale them down so remember that uh, the reason I am uh, scaling it down because the further tutorial is split into two sections so uh, I'll be not explaining the scaling for the both sections because again then it will become duplicate or double double time so I'll just tell you if your textures are too large then you can scale them down so I know the value of scaling because I have worked on this earlier so I press uh, it uh, beginning what you can do is you can just let the scale to be your present value and while you test on if you feel your scale should be larger then or if your scale should be smaller then you can just scale them here and the second thing what I will do is I'll just select both of the nodes and I'll just place them little this side so the reason I am placing them little this side is because to avoid this kind of glitches here you can see that our concrete mesh or our glass mesh and our both textures are glitching so to avoid that kind of glitch what I'll do is I'll just place it little this side so that it's not exactly at the origin remember one thing if you have flipped in this side or if you have flipped in this side as seen the tutorial and you don't get the texture to be visible then you just flip it this side or just drag it in this side but I have tested earlier and for my case it was in the negative z axis so this is my z axis and uh, while placing the te textures on negative z axis the textures were visible so remember this point and lastly I'll just save my concrete and glass scene so till now the tutorial was same for both virtual and 3d bullet so from now I'll be continuing the tutorial on virtual bullet so if you want to add the bullet hole texture for a 3d bullet like if you watched this tutorial and after this you want your bullet to have bullet holes then what you can do is you can go to the next chapter else I suggest you to watch the full tutorial so that you will have a idea of making bullet holes for both virtual and 3d bullet so now for the virtual bullet here I have my bullet scene and what my bullet scene consists of is a main node of type special a ray cache node and a timer node so if you haven't watched my advanced bullet tutorial then you can just go ahead and watch the tutorial so this is the continuation of the tutorial so here so this all code was written on the advanced bullet hole tutorial so at the beginning what we will do is we will preload our bullet hole scene so just write on ready or bh and that equals to preload and the path for our bullet scene so if you don't know the path for your bullet scene then what you can do is in the file section search for bullet hole so yes so this is my bullet hole scene so here what i'll do is i'll select everything copy and in the quotation mark i'll just paste so after this after this line write variable bullet hole equals to bh dot instance which means we just make a copy of our bullet hole scene so after making a copy what we'll do is we'll write collision body dot add child and here we just add our bullet hole as a child of collision body here the collision body is nothing but it's just uh, recast dot get collider if our recast is collided we just store it in our collision body so here what we do is collision body dot add child and we just add our bullet hole as a child of collision body so after this we will say bullet hole dot global transform dot origin equals to recast dot get collision point so this will properly place our bullet hole scene where our bullet has collided so after this write bullet hole dot look at and here we pass two parameter the first parameter is recast dot get collision point plus recast dot get collision normal so that so by passing this parameter our bullet hole scene will know where it should be looking at 
and the second parameter is vector 3 dot up and this will orient our bullet hole so after this right if collision body is in group of concrete then bullet hole dot show hole function and again here the parameter we pass as concrete so if you have remembered here i have given my concrete main node in the group called concrete so here if our bullet collides with a object and if the object is in group concrete then we call our show hole function with the parameter as concrete and if you look at the show hole function here if our type matches to concrete then what it will do is it will make our concrete texture to be visible it will pick a random frame and it will just rotate our texture randomly it will even flip our texture randomly and after three seconds our can arrays becomes true and if our can arrays becomes true then it will generally fade our bullet hole texture and once our bullet hole texture has been fully faded what it will do is it will just delete the bullet hole scene so this process fully works and again after this line right if our collision body or if our bullet hole has collided any object and if our collision body is in group called glass then we just say bullet hole and we call our uh, show hole function with the parameter as glass and again here I have passed or I have selected the main node and I have group it under the group called glass and again when we call our show hole function the whole process runs so to test our main scene I have created my main scene here I have just instanced both of the objects uh, you can see here I have instanced my uh, glass object and also I have instanced my concrete object and now if I run my scene if I look at my glass and if I shoot you can see the texture is visible and after three seconds it generally fades out yes and even if I shoot at the concrete yes you can see the textures are visible and after few seconds textures become invisible so if your textures are too large then remember to scale them down and also to place them properly so that's it for bullet holes for advanced bullet so now I'll be continuing the tutorial for 3d bullet so so this was the last scene of our bullet tutorial so next if you go to our bullet scene here we have a rigid body and a mesh instance collision shape for our bullet and a area node and the collision shape to detect the collisions so now we will add a raycast node and call it as collider yes next click on enable uh, change the y to 0 z to 2 and now place the raycast approximately here you can see the raycast is of this length so this request will help us to add bullet hole textures so next in the script okay so the whole script was written on that video i mean on the bullet tutorial so at the beginning create the reference for this node so just write on ready our collider and the path for our collider node and then we will preload our bullet hole scene so to preload our bullet hole scene write on ready our bh equals to preload and here we will pass our uh, bullet hole scene path so just select your bullet hole scene and here select the whole thing uh, copy and here in the quotation mark just paste the scene or the path for your scene so after this uh, create a process function okay so this is an inbuilt function with the parameter as delta so in this function write if collider dot is colliding which means if our raycast is colliding then variable collision body equals to raycast dot to get collider which means we get the object for which our bullet has collided and we store it in our collision body so after this write variable bullet hole equals to bh dot instance which means we create a copy of our bullet hole scene so after this write collision body dot add a child and here we add our bullet hole as a child of collision body so here what our collision body is it's uh, the object which our bullet has collided so after this write bullet hole dot global transform dot origin equals to collider dot get collision point so this will tell our bullet hole scene that where our bullet has collided and after this write 
bullet hole dot look at and here we pass two parameters the first one is collider dot get collision point plus collider dot get collision normal so what this line do is it will tell our uh, bullet hole scene where it should look at and the second parameter is vector 3 dot up so this uh, parameter will uh, help to align our bullet hole so after this right uh, if collision body dot is in group concrete so if you remember uh, for uh, the demo tutorial or for the demo purpose here we have created a collision body and the main node was grouped in a group called uh, concrete so if our bullet collides with a object of group concrete so remember that this name should be exactly the same as this one so if uh, our bullet collides with concrete then what we should do is we want our bullet hole texture to show up our concrete uh, texture so we just call our show hole function with the parameter as concrete so if you remember here in our bullet hole function uh, we have created a function called show hole with a parameter type so if our type matches to concrete then what it will do is it will call our rotate texture function with the parameter concrete and here in our rotate texture function what it will do is it will make uh, the texture to be visible and it will pick a random texture and then it will rotate uh, the random texture and flip hedge if necessary and then create a timer wait for three seconds and then it, uh, our can errors becomes true and if our can errors becomes true then it will slowly fade out after fading our bullet hole scene it will just delete by itself so next right if collision body dot is in group glass so again for our um, demo of glass uh, we have grouped our glass object in a group called glass so again this uh, parameter again should be the same as this one so if our bullet has collided any glass object then we will just call our show hole function with the parameter as glass and again this whole process runs so after this right q3 okay so now before testing the scene uh, if you know here we have created a function called uh, you can just see uh, there was a area and a collision body and if our uh, bullet collides with any object and if the object was in group enemy then we just uh, decrease our enemy health by our damage number and then we just delete our bullet scene so what we'll do is we will alter uh, this bullet script a little bit so first let me give you an example so if you go to project project settings and here under physics under common here you will see that uh, the physics fps is set to 60 okay so the 60 is in default value so what that line means is yes uh, here i just uh, took an example so what that line means is uh, just imagine from here to here uh, there is a uh, time duration of one second and 60 fps means our code runs 60 times in one second so like uh, there are 60 lines or you can say it as a single line runs our code one second so it means in one second uh, our total code will run 60 times so just imagine uh, we zoom in this section and here just imagine this is the 25th frame or you can say it as our code run 25th time this is the 26th and here our code runs 26th time and this is the 27th and the code runs 27 time so here imagine a case where our uh, bullet uh, is traveling towards the enemy and it just travels in this side and at the 25th frame what it will do is uh, the bullet will be traveling towards enemy and between our 25th and 26th frame what it do is it will just collide the enemy and it just backs back so uh, what 26th frame will calculate is uh, it will calculate uh, the bullet is moving in another direction so here uh, the collision time gap is too low that our bullet cannot calculate uh, the collision of our uh, bullet uh, sorry our code cannot calculate the collision of our bullet and our enemy and this case happens too many times or you can say it as uh, this type of glitch or this type of error uh, happens more times so the uh, collision of bullet and enemy is so instant that our uh, code cannot calculate the collisions so to fix that what you can do is you can just go to project project settings and here you can increase the physics fps but increasing the physics fps uh, will uh, make your game not to be optimized okay so to fix that what you can do is in the process function after this line right uh, if collision body dot is in group enemy so if our uh, ray cache is colliding any object and if the object is in group enemy so here uh, the group again same uh, it was same as we have grouped uh, the concrete and the glass node 
and don't worry about this group uh, if you have created the enemy by seeing my last tutorial then you will be knowing this idea so if our uh, collision body is in group enemy then what we'll do is we'll just decrease our enemy health by our damage amount so again this two line code is same as here so again no need to write q free because once our whole code runs at last it will just uh, delete our bullet so again no need to write uh, q free in double double time so now what we'll do is we'll just delete this line and then what you can do is you can just delete this node and now uh, it's time for instancing uh, the bullet or uh, sorry uh, now it's the time for instancing our glass and concrete node so what i'll do is i'll quickly instantiate both my nodes or both my scenes yes so now what i'll do is i'll run my scene and if i look at and fire okay so uh, the bullet speed is too uh, or uh, the bullet is too fast so you cannot see uh, what's going on so let me decrease it by 10 or uh, by 20 so here i am decreasing the speed and again run my scene and if i look at and fire okay so here you will notice that our bullet is facing in wrong direction like it's facing towards uh, the bullet sorry it's facing towards the gun so to fix that what you can do is go to your bullet scene Accept the main node, select all the other nodes and press control and just rotate it in another direction and now if you run your scene Now you can see if you fire, uh, the bullet is colliding the glass and uh, it's printing or you can say it as it's uh, making a um, bullet holes and okay so again you can see it, uh, the same case is happening for our concrete node also and if you kill the enemy you can see the again the enemy is getting killed and at sometimes what happens is if you increase your speed then uh, the bullet hole is too fast that it just uh, reflects back or uh, there is no proper bullet holes uh, there will be uh, like some of the bullets will just pass through or some will just reflect back and even if we try to kill enemy you can see uh, there is a collision happening here and the bullets are just reflecting rather than killing the enemy so to avoid this kind of thing what you can do is you can just follow up my advanced bullet hole tutorial and that's it for the video thank you guys for watching my video if you have any questions you can comment me below do like this tutorial do comment do subscribe and always have a great day <laughs> like for going let me tell you, you can download the source code of the project from my GitHub link. Okay, so before going, let me tell you, some guys will say that uh, they have a diffuse map with a normal texture. So you can see this is the diffuse map and this is the normal texture and some guys will say that uh, they want to add the normal texture for our, uh, their bullet hole too. So if you want to add that, then what you can do is you can just create a message instance and uh, then you can just uh, create the reference for the textures and in code you have to manually set uh, the albedo and the normal map manually and for setting this uh, you can uh, you will need to write a few lines of code and this will be or you will setting uh, the single uh, albedo texture and normal map will take few lines of code and if you have multiple textures and if you want uh, to have a random texture then there will be more lines of code so to avoid more clumsiness what I have did is I have just created uh, the animated sprite node and uh, just enabled the shaded option. So what's the difference between mesh instance with a normal map and a normal animated sprite node. So here what the difference makes is imagine this is a light bulb and if I just uh, drag this side here you see that this was a mesh instance with a normal map and this is our animated sprite 3D node and here uh, there you can see uh, slightly lightning effects on our bullet hole but even at dark uh, the this uh, our animated sprite will become darky and th even this bullet hole with a normal map will become dark and if there is light then both of them will be lighted uh, the only difference you get is at some point uh, the light this looks greater but this normally looks Okay, so there is no much difference because the bullet holes are too tiny that adding a message sense with a normal map won't work or you can say it as this will be fully ignored 
so i just found uh, adding animated sprite is easy because you can just pick a random texture with no more lines of code and uh, there will be no clumsiness and yes this tutorial was for beginners and i guess you can see uh, the result for this even works the same as this one at the light or you can say it as when there is light uh, it's lightened up and if there is no light uh, there is darkened of the texture and yes uh, again i say the textures were too small and the textures will be too small so that uh, a player cannot notice uh, any difference and there comes a rare case where your lightning may have different angles so that's it for this tutorial bye bye